everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and this video, we're gonna take a look again at another feature and a set of uh, controls here for the Icon QCon Pro X Surface Control. If you have not seen all the prior videos, make sure you check the playlist link in the description box below where we have a whole series of videos uh, about getting up and running with the Icon QCon Pro X. In this video specifically, I'm gonna show you how to map your plugin controls to the Icon so you can control your plugin parameters with the actual surface control and not necessarily with the mouse and keyboard. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in the video, please consider subscribing. Also with that notification bell. Also, if this is your first time here, we're talking about a surface control and mixing. I want you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I wanna give you a free mixing course. It's a $100 mixing course. It's right on the homepage. Just click that big orange button. You can't miss it. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you really want to learn the craft of mixing in a non-technical way, and you want to win plugins and have full mixing courses every month and new multi-track files to work on, and you want to join a community of like-minded people that are all trying to get better at the craft of mixing, check out what I have going on at mixingmadeeasy.net. All the links will be in the description box below, and we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of this video. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you something else for free. <sighs> All right, let's get into Studio One here. So you'll see on the screen, I have the basic Studio One stock compressor. Located here on track number nine, you'll see it selected here on the Icon QCon Pro X. So how do you map your plugin controls to the encoders here at the top. We have 24 encoders because I have the main unit and two extension units that gives me the ability to have 24 separate parameters all on the encoders so I don't have to touch the plugin. Real simple in Studio One. Got your plugin open. We wanna come over here and look at the plugin here to this little cog wheel that we see here. Wanna make sure that that is opened, okay? If it's grayed out, click it, it should turn blue and you'll see this little window pane open up. Then we wanna come over here to this drop down where it says control and we're gonna see our control, which is the main center unit, and then we have our two extenders. So we can either put the parameters on these eight encoders, or if we choose to put it on this encoder, these sets of encoders, or on these sets of encoders, it's up to you. Let's start with the one here to the left, because that's probably closest to, this, to, the, uh, to the video, so you can see it a little bit better. So we'll click on that. And you're gonna get this external devices, mapping box here, for lack of a better word. So easy to do. Let's say our first encoder, we want that to be our ratio. So we come over to our ratio, we just kind of turn it, activate it here in the top left-hand corner of the plugin where it says ratio, take this little hand that's next to it, left click on the hand, drag it over and drop it into that first parameter. And now if I come over here on the encoder, you'll see that it controls it, right? Wonderful. Let's say the next control is our attack, right? Attack then release. So let's go over to attack, left click, just activate it here in the top left-hand corner of the plugin, take the little hand, drag it over to spot number two. And you'll see on the LCD screen that we have ratio and attack. You'll see it right up here. Hopefully you can see that on the, on the uh, iPhone camera here, right? Attack, it works. Let's do the same thing with release. Activate release little hand to number three. And then last, let's do the, let's say the threshold, right? Those would be the four basic controls. Number four, left hand, drag it over. So now we have our, our ratio, attack, release, and threshold. You could have put that in any order that you want. If you don't like that order, you can't just rearrange it. You have to actually right click, unassign it, and then reassign it into the order you want. But however, you will see that all of these controls are now working. And the beauty is once you map this to the plugin the first time, every time you take the plugin out of the browser and drop it on another track, all these things should already be mapped. Let's test out that theory. So if I close this and I close this, and now I go to the next track here, track 10, let's get that same plugin from the plugin browser. Let's drag it over here on the track 10 close my plugin browser. And now you'll see again on the LCD screen over on the left, all the controls will work. Really cool, right? So you only have to do this one time for each one of your plugins. And the next time you go to use that plugin, it should be there. Now, let's go to back to track number nine here for the first one, which is the overhead left. If I click overhead left, you will see that the plugin on the screen changes. 
see the top uh, right above in the top left hand corner of the plugin, you'll see it says overhead L O H L overhead left insert. If I go to the next select track on my icon QCon Pro X, it changes to the right. But look what happens. This is really cool. So if I'm on the left one, look at the LCD screen and the controls. I can turn the controls. Oh, wrong pot. Sorry. Right. Here's the controls working on that plugin. If I select the next track, plugin window stays open and advances to the next track. All these controls are independent, right? So what does that mean? That's huge. So let's say on all of your tracks and your 30 track session, let's say the very first thing you like to do before you do any processing, you like to do a little bit of compression or you like to do a little bit of EQ, whatever. You take that plugin, drop it across all 50 of your tracks in your session after you've mapped it the first time. And now just by going with your select buttons from one track to the other, you can now control your parameters of that plugin and you never have to use the mouse to open and close the plugin window, which is huge. One of the things that takes an enormous amount of time when you're working in the box mixing compared to working on a real console is the fact, yes, the faders and taking your mouse and taking one fader at a time, so on and so forth. And you got, you have all that now solved with the icon QCon Pro X, but what's even a more time suck sucks the time out of your mix is opening and closing plugin windows with your mouse, right? So let's say you had a 50 track session and you had two plugins on every track. That's a hundred times you have to open windows and a hundred times you have to close windows. That's 200 clicks minimum, not to mention all the parameter adjustments you have to do with your mouse or your trackball. That's what takes all the time. With a system like this, where you can map the controls to all of your encoders, you don't have to do that except for the first time. And by using your select buttons, you only have to open the plugin the first time. And then you just move through all your tracks. And if you have that same plugin across all your tracks, all of your stuff is going to be mapped. Does that make sense? And it works flawlessly. That's great. That's how you map a plugin control in Studio One. It is super simple. So that's with a stock plugin. Let me show you the same thing that I've already kind of did with a third party plugin. So down here in purple, we're on our kick track here, right? Let's open up our plugin here. This is the CLA Mix Hub by Waves. It's an SSL channel strip. So here's something that may make this thing even more intuitive. Instead of having just a single compressor on your track, what if you consider mixing with channel strips, which is what I love to do, whether it's a stock plugin channel strip, an SSL, an API, an E from a third party company, doesn't matter. What's great about channel strips is you have your preamp, your filters, your EQ, your compressors, your gates, five modules, all in one plugin window. Whereas when you're working with a stock plugin, you just have a compressor, then you have to put an EQ as your second plugin and maybe a, a filter as your third plugin. With this, it's all done in one window. So as you'll see here on the left-hand side on my first extender, I've already mapped a bunch of controls here. So I'm on the kick track. If I take these pots, you'll see this is my line input here. You'll see it right down here where my cursor is. I know it's a little challenging to see. I have the resolution shrunk down so we can get everything on the screen here. If I go to the next one, this is my filters, my low cut and my high cut filters. Again, down here where my cursor is, high cut, low cut filters. That's on my kick track. You can see that because it's named kick right at the top left hand corner. All I have to do is hit my select. Now I'm on my snare sample track, track number two, but all the parameters are mapped. So once again, I can do all of my plugging control without ever having to open a window, right? Here we are on track number eight. Here's our overhead mono track. The plugin changes. Again, all the controls work because I only mapped this plugin the first time. If you have 24 encoders, as I said earlier, you can map every control on this plugin to all 24 encoders so you never have to touch the mouse. Awesome. So consider using channel strips. That would be helpful less closing and opening of plugin windows. Here's the one drawback. And again, this is not unique to the icon QCon Pro X, it's, but it's every surface control um, that has an LCD screen. 
as you can see on this LCD screen, when you have a lot of parameters, they start to all jumble together and it's hard to really read it. It's almost impossible to read it. And if you do that across all three units here, it would look like, you know, hieroglyphics. <laughs> you won't be able to read it. I wish there was a way to shrink the font size on the icon units. I wish you could shrink that down because if you made that font even half of the size, you'd still be able to read it really well and it would look a little bit more legible. The other thing that you can't do, at least in Studio One, maybe you can do this in another DAW. Remember we said we open up our mapping uh, button here and if we come over here, there's no way to change the font in these mapping where we mapped our plugin. There's no way you can only unassign it. You can't double click, you can't change the name. So like this first one says pre line. So that's the preamp, the line level. And that's why it says PR line on the, on the, um, on the icon. I wish you could change that to just say line. Why does it need to say pre or input or in or something like that? I wish you could change the names. You can't do that in studio one. You might be able to do that in other doors. I don't know. Um, but, that's the only drawback I feel is that you, you got to kind of just memorize where they are. So if you're going to work with a channel strip or whatever plugging you're going to do, you may want it. You may want to put it in a very specific order that you like to work. Once you have those kind of memorized, you always know my line input is here. My high cut and low cut filters are here. And then I go to my EQ, high EQ frequency, high EQ gain, mid EQ frequency, mid EQ gain, so on and so forth. You could kind of get it down. And if you work with just a handful of plugins all the time, or you have your favorite go-to plugins, you'll start to memorize these things. So it's not so bad. And you can look at the LCD screen and it will give you some information. But like I said, depending on the plugin and the way it's abbreviated, you really can't change it. Again, in Studio One, it's kind of a shame that you can't use the, it doesn't use the second LCD screen that's here. This is a great feature with the Icon QCon Pro X and the extenders but Studio One doesn't recognize it. Again, this is a DAW function. It's not an icon function. Because that would be nice if you had both LCD screens kind of sharing the, the real estate for information to be a little bit easier to, uh, to see. But that's how you map plugins in Studio One. It is easy, it is intuitive, and that will really, really help cut down on your mixing time because you won't have to double click, open and close, open and close, open and close, open and close. All you do is use your select button here on the icon and it will automatically switch to the next plugin window and that is brilliant. And again, you wanna check with your DAW to make sure that that feature works. It does here, it does with Cubase, but there are other DAWs, I would assume they would all work. But sometimes some of these features that work really well on this system work with some DAWs and not others. And again, that's not a fault of the Icon QCon Pro X. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a function of the DAW itself specifically, but in Studio One it works. So I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Now, like I said, I'm gonna give you something else for free. You stuck around to the end of the video and I really do appreciate it. First and foremost, make sure you check the playlist in the description box below to go check out the rest of the Icon QCon Pro X videos that we have in this series. Also, I want you to go back out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. If you don't have that free mixing course, get it. $100 mixing course for free. Take that course. If you dig my style of teaching and you say, you know, I wanna learn more from Uncle Dave, what other training courses does he have? Hey, that's a great question. I have training courses on my website for EQ compression, parallel compression, recording, mixing, mastering, and so on and so forth. Full length training courses will really help you get up and running in your studio, no matter what your needs are. If you wanna take one of those full training courses, I wanna give you a 25% discount with a special coupon code. That coupon code is YouTube25. You put that at checkout, it'll take 25% off any training course on my website. And last but certainly not least, like I said, if you're into mixing and you really wanna learn the craft of mixing and you wanna join a great community of people and you wanna get super good at mixing as quickly as humanly possible, then check out mixingmadeeasy.net. All the links will be in the description box below. So until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and mixingmadeeasy.net. And I'll see you guys really soon. Take care, everybody.